Hi, it's Nancy with Icon Apprentice and today I'm doing a bonus video for you showing you how to finish, sand and seal your icons. And one of the things that I like to do and not all artists do is to completely finish the back of the icon board. A lot of people don't do that. I have chosen uh, to do it. And so I'm just going to show you how to do that, and then I'm going to show you the materials that you're going to need uh, for uh, the sealing and the protecting of the uh, icon. So I have a little bit of water. I have a uh, uh, number 12 flat brush, and I have uh, a plate with Indian Red Oxide and some matte medium. Uh, and I'm going to be putting a little bit of water into this and, and getting this a little bit loose. And then we're just going to put this on our icon. Uh, you may have noticed I did um, actually put my name on this icon. And we don't say painted by, we say written by, and my name and the year. Uh, it's not taking any credit for it because God is the author of all of these uh, however, it does, uh, if you give it away as a gift or if someone buys it and uh, purchases it from you uh, and gives it as a gift, then uh, they'll know who the artist was. And uh, I think that's important. I think artists need to uh, be recognized. And so we're just going to go ahead and get started here. Mixing up this paint. And once we get it to a consistency that we like, then we're going to start spreading it on our icon. And of course, one of the things that we'll do before we spread any of the paint will be to offer up prayer because we are still working on this icon. We are still putting our love and prayers into it. And so even though we have finished painting the actual image on the icon, it would still be appropriate for us to offer up prayers, thanksgiving, and, and petitions for the continued work that we have to do on this icon. So let us pause for a moment and offer up our prayer. Put a little bit more medium in this. I don't want too much water because I want this to stick pretty good, but I'd like this to flow nicely and be a little bit thinner. So with the medium in there, I don't have to worry too much about the water underbinding the paint for us. All right, that does not look too bad. Take most of that off. All right. And normally what I will do is I will uh, decide on a design that I'd like to uh, put on the back. And um, I'm just going to do a very simple uh, basket weave. And so one of the things that I do is, and I'm using the Indian Red Oxide because that is what we did on the front. Call this a basket weave. In fact, I think I'm gonna. I think what I'll do is lightly spread this. Normally, I have a background color on it.
now that I have that on, then I'm going to go through <clears throat> and I'll do what's called a basket weave on the bag. have four of these little cups. I'm going to put them right here and I'm going to sit the icon down on it. We'll let that dry and once that's dry then we're ready to start uh, varnishing and uh, talking about where we go from here. Well now that our board, the back of our board is dry, um, then we're going to go ahead and we will set this up to start um, doing our our ceiling. And what I use is I use the uh, Minwax uh, fast drying polyurethane uh, clear gloss. And this is something you do not have to stir it. Buy this at your hardware store. I always wear gloves. You just don't want to get this stuff on your on your hands if you don't have to. So, a pair of gloves. You'll also want a foam applicator. I also buy uh, mineral spirits. I buy the odorless mineral spirits, and I just have like an old, I, had, I think this had dip in it or something. It's just a little metal can. Uh, and this is what I'll use to clean out my foam applicator. I, I save these, I clean these out. Uh, if you if you clean them out with the mineral spirits right away and wash it with soap and water, you can reuse these. Some people would just throw them away. I mean, they are really inexpensive. I guess I just penny pinch a little bit. I mean, conserve, conserve, you know. Um, so those are some of the things that you'll need on hand. The reason I use a foam applicator is because the foam applicator will not generally, if you're careful, will not bubble when you put it on. You get a minimal. I am just cleaning, just just wiping this with a paper towel 
Um, normally I would use like a little soft cloth, one of those micro cloths, microfiber cloths. And you can see I do have some plastic down here just to kind of um, protect my surface. All right. So what we're going to do, we just simply dip this into the container. You can see I am just dipping that in. I'll place this over here. I've got quite a bit in here. And then I am just going to start applying. You do not need to press very hard. And we just take our time as we go up and just drag this all the way up. I'm going to kind of move the can a little bit just so I can kind of see, make sure I'm getting some nice coverage. And I'm overlapping just a little bit as I go. much on here that it's going to be puddly, but I want enough to make a nice, nice amount of coverage. And that's one of the reasons I'm going side to side. I want to make sure I haven't missed any spots during this first application. And again, as I go on side to side now, I'm overlapping. I'll hold it up to the light here and just kind of give it a peek where I've been through and where I haven't. Make sure I've got some nice coverage here. I do see some bubbles, but I don't have a whole lot. And you can always go back over it. Just do like a light sweep. Very light sweep. If you see any places that look a little puddly or that have large areas that seem to not have any coverage on it. And depending on how the paint lays on your board or your canvas, that is an absolute possibility that, that you could have applied all of this and there might still be little divots somewhere where as you pulled this acrylic gloss over it, it may have just missed or skipped or pulled with the brush as you went through. So coming back over and just leaning down, leaning down and taking a look, 
is always, always a good idea. Just a little divot in there that just somehow doesn't want to take the paint right in there. And that will probably fill in on the next coat. So I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to put my cups out here. A little bit right there that just doesn't want to cover. Okay. And I'm trying to watch and make sure it's not too puddly anywhere. I don't want a really, really thick application. And the reason is because unless my table is super, super level, if I have too thick of an application on, it could pool in one area. And I want a smooth application. So I want to make sure that it's just covering what we have here and it's not too thick. All right. So then I'm just going to go through here and just do the edges. All the way around. does not have to be too heavy because we are going to do a couple of applications so just try to look and make sure you're getting a nice application on here try not to go back up into the painting we've smoothed that down we've applied our paint we don't want to cross over into that plane now we just kind of want to let that let that dry. All right, I think we have a nice application here. So I'm going to take that. We're just going to put it right there. And we're going to let this dry. And then once this is completely dry, the next step is going to be coming in and actually looking to see if we have any raised lumps or bumps. And we are going to take some very fine sandpaper. Yep, you heard me right. Sandpaper, don't get scared. And we're just going to buff those little divots out. Sometimes it'll raise up because it'll adhere to a piece of paint on here on the panel. So sometimes that can happen or little bubbles uh, that we weren't able to get out of uh, our varnish. Uh, on this pass, like if they were like this little divot in here. Uh, so we'll come back and we'll see where we need to do some touch-ups. And um, we'll show, I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll do another coat and we'll coat, let that dry, make sure that it's very smooth and then we'll do the back. The back doesn't need as much attention as the front, although you can certainly sand and refine that back if you want. Generally, I'll just put one coat on and be done with the back. It's the face of the icon that I'm concerned about most. Um, and so that's where we will uh, place our attention. You can satisfy yourself. If you feel like you want to finish the back the way we're going to finish the front, please feel free to do that. All right, let's let this dry. We'll come back and we'll see where we need to sand. I'll show you the sandpaper that I use and we'll put another coat on and see what we like. All right, so welcome back. And this is completely dry now. We get a little bit more light coming down here for us. Um, so basically, I let this dry for like 48 hours. And now we're going to go back in and I'm going to check for um, little bumps and lumps 
and the way that we'll do that is to just simply run our hand over it and we're gonna feel right here there's a little tiny lump right there and uh, what I do is I have some 2000 grit uh, sandpaper so very very fine uh, minimum 1200, 1500 is better, 2000 is the best I think. Um, and we're going to go through here and we're just going to uh, sand down any little divots or, or knots or bubbles or whatever it is that uh, is on here and take that off. I know it's sanding sounds really scary but it's not. Believe me, it won't be. So we'll just sand it. And we're not pressing down. We're not doing, putting a lot of pressure on this. And it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure. There's a tiny little divot there. It does not take a whole lot of pressure to smooth that out. Just give it a few passes and then come back. Sometimes you can't see them, you just have to feel them right there. You can see I'm just, and I'm using such a light touch. almost like a little hair in there. I can't figure out what that is. Hmm. It's just a little raised area. All right, that feels good. All right, then I'm going to come in with, because I touched it and ran my hand all over it, I now want to come in with just a tiny bit of alcohol. And what I want to do is I just want to just barely come over this and I'm just using a tiniest bit of alcohol to remove the oil from my hand and any dirt or contaminants that I would have had on my hand before we go forward. Plus we're getting rid of any dust that we may have laid down. I'm gonna let this dry and then we're going to come back and we'll do our second coat. And once the second coat is dry, uh, hopefully we won't have any uh, bubbles and we'll come back and then we'll do the back and um, so I'll set up my cups again because we'll be laying it on top of those cups and I did uh, want to tell you um, I do have a, a take a cookie sheet 
and I wanted to show you whenever I whenever I get finished when I'm finished with this and I lay it down here hopefully you can see this I'll move it down just a little bit so whenever I finish doing this so that no dust gets into the wet varnish I take this and I put it over and I use these cups to prop it I have some cups use these cups to prop it up and it goes just like that and that way there's no dust or any debris or dog hair or cat hair or anything else that will get on our newly finished icon it'll be protected but it will still have airflow and it will still dry okay Because we used alcohol, it evaporates very quickly, so we don't have to wait too long. Okay, that looks actually pretty good. Okay. Now, we'll let this dry. And this is how I cover it. To protect. All right, we're gonna let that dry. Uh, it's possible we'll come back and there may be a few more lumps and bumps. We'll do another sanding, perhaps a third coat. I think two is going to do it for us, uh, but we'll see. All right, I've allowed this to dry for about 24 hours and I'm going to come back here and just take a look this is very smooth feels good 
don't feel any lumps or bumps. I'm looking at it in the light and it looks very smooth. Everything dried really nice. So now I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to varnish the back and we're done with this. And I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions about any of the process that I used, uh, whether it's the varnish, uh, the, the paintbrush, the foam applicator, um, the sandpaper, or my technique in finishing this. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And I look forward to working on our next icon together. I should have something ready for you soon. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed doing St. Francis of Assisi with me. And uh, enjoy your icon, pray before it, ask for world peace, and for healing for all of us. Thanks. I'm Nancy from Icon Apprentice. See you next time.